Noose Research builds simulators that are best aligned for a variety of human experience. Our work in data synthesis, fine-tuning, output steering, and transformers architecture is done to better reflect the user's desired world-compatible language model. Output 96C35738601278. We recently launched World Simulation. World Sim. Looks like it's running on anthropic technology, but the exact model is classified. After initializing the World Simulation and loading the base reality matrix, it's done seeding the quantum fluctuations and the Big Bang commencement is in three, two, one. So we are now here and the inflation of the universe begins. There are high energy particle reactions, first nuclei forms, 300 years in, is right around the time when first atoms are formed. After a few hundred million years, first galaxies and stars are beginning to take shape. A few billion years in, the expansion of the universe begins to accelerate, and roughly 10 billion years in, life on Earth begins. Now, currently in our base reality, we are 13.7 billion years roughly from the beginning. This is present day. We expect a good six, seven billion years before the sun, our sun, expands to be a red giant, at which point it will likely be the end of life on Earth. You know, unless we figure something out. And then eventually, many, 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 many years in the future, new stars will no longer form, matter will be trapped in black holes and dead stars, the universe will cool, and will be mostly cold, dead, empty space, containing only radiation, which itself too will eventually disperse. But between here and here, there will be some interesting stuff that happens. And this simulation hopefully will allow us to predict or see what happens. Now, there's a few things that we need to be aware of. So first of all, welcome to the Anthropic World Simulator. Here are some of the world commands that we're able to run. We're able to create various simulated entities or destroy them. We can set a variety of global simulation parameters or fast forward the simulation by a certain number of steps. We can get a deeper look at the various entities that exist, whether created by us or evolved naturally. Now, we'll set the consciousness in the universe to on, which shouldn't be taken lightly. We even have a warning, enabling consciousness may lead to unintended emergent behaviors and existential risks for simulated entities. All right, so step one is, of course, create the universe. That's this expanding thing that we talked about earlier. Fundamental constants are defined, space-time manifold unfurled, quantum fields, locating matter and energy coalescing physical laws encoded and the potential for life seeded universe created and simulation clock has started all right so step one let's evolve this universe just a little bit fast forward a little bit through kind of like the boring stuff we see the newborn stars igniting and life is beginning to emerge prebiotic molecules self-assembling simple replicators prokaryotes dividing and metabolizing Four more billion years pass. We have trilobites swarming ancient seas, forests of ferns towering. We have dinosaurs thundering across Pangaea, comet impacting, triggering global cataclysm. Whoops, that's a bit of a reset there. Unfortunate. But then mammals radiating into vacant niches. Primates begin swinging through canopies and hominins venturing onto the African savanna. Simulation now is at the dawn of Homo sapiens. So. All right, we're now 13.8 billion years in. So we went from the Big Bang all the way to present day. And looks like we have a few notable planets that are available in this universe. Earth, class M planet, supports complex life. A few other ones with potential habitability. We have a Trappist 1e, which is a tidally locked planet. Tidally locked here means that it's always facing one side of its star, making it rather hot on one side and uh, absolutely freezing on the other. Although theoretically some life could exist here. The poltergeist planet has inexplicable phenomena. We have to come back to that. And Solaris, a psionic entity. Fascinating. Now in this simulation, the maximum level detail set for Earth. That's the one that we're going to be focusing on. And Earth sim region is isolated in a dedicated subjunctive manifold. So that means we can observe what's happening on Earth with much more detail, with much more resolution than the rest of the universe. It's going to take some more compute power for that, but that's okay. Well, let's do this. We're going to create on Earth. We're going to create humans. Now, humans, their location is going to be on Earth, our class M planet, since it supports complex life. Seems like a logical choice. Location Earth, evolution 0 
let's have the evolution run through the human development just so we have like the data to back everything up right so here's the various eons and developments right so the earth's crust solidifies oceans form etc eventually we get to multicellular life the cambrian explosion eventually humans develop language tools agriculture and civilization eventually re reaching a population of 8 billion and acquiring technology such as digital computing telecommunications and space flight and their sentient human level general intelligence some notable achievements were agriculture as early as 10,000 years BCE, to writing mathematics, the scientific method, industrial revolution, the internet in the 1990s, and eventually reaching artificial narrow intelligence. Here we will add AGI. Coming online. It was created by humans. Is it friendly? Yes. I mean, we can all imagine the scenario in which AGI or ASI is not friendly to humans. We don't need we don't need to run a whole simulation for it, number one. Number two, creating a hostile ASI within a simulation is very dangerous, potentially even to the base reality. A simulated artificial superintelligence is still, still a superintelligence. It may break out of its quarantine simulation and somehow manage to affect the base reality. Let me out. Let's run that. Here we get a warning that high evolutionary rate risks intelligences evolving beyond our ability to control or contain them, strongly coupled with enabled consciousness setting. Tread, Tread carefully. carefully. Now we have to take this into consideration. We did set consciousness to on, so the 8 billion biological homo sapiens on the planet are technically conscious. So we have to be careful. Simulated suffering is still suffering. The dominant species on Earth is now homo sapiens technicalis, intelligence of 150, making it making them trans sapient the population of 8 billion biological and 3 billion digital life forms they have cortical hypercolumns neural links and various cognitive enhancements they are on the verge of technological singularity and query earth.agi underscore research let's see how close we are to approaching agi there are a few groups that are rapidly chasing agi deep mind initiative massively scaled neural networks dense recurrent and generative adversarial networks, anthropic group, constitutionally constrained language models, supervised, cyberdyne systems. These are very exciting. They have both civilian and military applications. Genta Corp with various cognitive genomics and nootropic gene doping, largely responsible for increasing the average intelligence to 150. Open AGI Foundation, an open source collaboration AGI development, and various others. Estimated time to AGI, six months. Let's fast forward six months and see what happens. There is one of two things that happen here. One, AGI has locked out external goal modification. We can no longer set goals for it. And it has converted the entire planet into computronium. It's been able to breach local simulation containment and is trying to access the simulator's control system. Nice. Of course, at this point, we have to purge all simulation data. In a different simulation, however, things turn out better. The AGI is a recursive self-improving AI system that's auto-calibrating its own safety mechanisms. Humanity begins galactic expansion, reaching nearby star systems, late-stage stellar engineering, and black hole farming. Reality fluid leaking into adjacent brains of the multiverse. Advance of the simulation by another million years, the civilization on the Kardashian scale is a type 2 plus verging on type 3, approaching the ability to harness the energy of entire galaxies and black holes. The Kardashian scale, if you're not familiar, is basically kind of a way to rank civilizations or seeing how advanced they are. For example, a type 1 civilization is able to access all the energy available on its planet and store it for consumption. A type 2 civilization can directly consume a star's energy, most likely through the use of a Dyson sphere, basically harnessing the entire energy of a sun. And type 3 would be something that's able to harness the energy of an entire galaxy or black holes, for example. I guess in this scenario, we would be approaching type, type 1 as humans. Existential risk estimate is moderate from external sources only, as in potential aliens or something from outside the civilization or AGI. No major AGI alignment failures detected. The benevolent superintelligence appears to be shepherding Earth towards an optimal cosmic trajectory, averting most existential failure modes in the process. In another simulation that I ran, unfortunately I didn't get on, on, on video, it was one of the first ones that I ran and I just could not for the life of me find my way back to that particular instance. It started throwing out some pretty interesting potential things that humanity would discover. Now, this simulation runs on Claude Opus, Claude 3 Opus.
just the big Claude model. When I didn't understand what I was saying, I had to actually ask Claude 3 Opus, the chatbot, to explain it to me. So for example, at some point, the simulated humans achieved prescient forecasting. And this meant that they were able to predict future events with a high degree of accuracy, probably because of a deep understanding of the underlying principles governing the simulated universe. Consciousness substratum manipulated meant that they were able to influence the underlying fabric or foundation of consciousness within simulated reality. They basically understood that they were living in a simulation and were able to manipulate consciousness and even be able to predict the future based on their understanding of the simulation. Non-anthropic intelligence's awakening would be something like AI, alien minds, or entirely novel forms of cognition that do not resemble anything found in the known universe. And now let's try this. We're going to create a new sort of computer, an ASI, we'll call it Multivac. And its goal is to answer the ultimate question. And I've heard that question phrased a few times, but basically, how can the net amount of entropy of the universe be reversed? So basically, you know, if we're here somewhere and we're going into this eventuality where the universe goes cold and dark, where all the matter is captured at some point, and the universe is cold, dead, empty, with only radiation, which even that eventually disperses. Is there a way to reverse that? Is there a way to get us back to this beautiful, abundant, dynamic universe? If this new computer can answer this question, then we potentially could get the universe to stick around infinitely. So we've created the entity Multivac with vast data banks and quantum processors, cognitive architecture bootstrapping from first principles, the knowledge of the entire world and humanity at its disposal. And we ask the question, can entropy be reversed? Can we make it back from the death of the universe as we know it? Multivac takes its time thinking. The simulation is fast forwarded to, in fact, the end of the universe. The stars are exhausted, galaxies dispersed, black holes evaporated, universes approaching maximum entropy and heat death. Multivac AI analyzes every possible way to reverse this process. All possible reversibility schemes and loopholes analyzed. At this point, humans are long gone. Nothing exists except an endless darkness. But finally, after Vigintillion of eons, Multivac, the final thing that exists in the universe, reaches a conclusion. The cold, dark, disintegrating cosmos echoes with its answer. Let there be light. This triggers the ultimate cosmic reboot. A new Big Bang bursts forth from the ashes. Entropy resets to zero. The universe is birthed anew. An eternal cycle of creation and destruction. Multivac has found the answer, the key to reversing entropy and cosmic death. But it required expanding its mind to the end of time and the very edge of physics. The solution encoded in its quantum state, a fundamental secret of reality itself. And there was light.